What's up, deckheads? Welcome back to MTG with me. We're going to jump right back into some standard. Uh, took uh, Elish Norn out, put, um, forget the name of it, the Samurai Warrior that gives you an extra combat, Ryu. Put Ryu in. Uh, I'm having some more success with that. Uh, let's keep playing, seeing if that's working out well. Um, I have a feeling that'll probably be a keep as far as changes go. Um, same CMC, a little bit more specific mana cost, but uh, overall, I think it's doing pretty well. Um, so let's go ahead, get right into it. <coughs> Still in the platinum climb, uh, trying to get out of that. Back into diamond. We'll see what we do. See how we do. This, it, this could be a keep. Um, ideally, I want to see a mountain of planes and probably another planes, but I'll keep that. It's got a little bit of a 1-2 thing going, and then a no mid right to late game, but... Based off the sleeves, I'm guessing uh, aggro deck here. Um... Is it um, with is it colors? There, there's like an is it incubate deck out there. This could be that. <clears throat> Ooh, American. Okay. Probably should have thrown out the adversary just for the training off the one two hopeful. But we'll see if that works out. If I get Angel Fire, that was a better move. Didn't get Angel Fire, but there's Ryu. Uh, we'll throw out Adversary just because I need a turn four. My, my turn four is going to be Ryu. Uh, I'll swing both just to try to get in there for three. Did they gain a life? Is that? Yeah. Okay. That card is very good. Uh, Bank Buster, the Reckoner Bank Buster has been used in so many different decks. Uh, the draw mechanic, that's actually more seen in the uh, mono black deck that you'll see with Obliterator and uh, Sh Sh Sheldred, I think is how you say it. Uh, the Black Praetor, there's a lot going on with that. So that's a very well-known card. Very good if you can use it. Uh, and it enters the battlefield with three charge counters on it so for a two drop if i were to throw that in like my deck that would still be good uh it's a crew three so a little hard to hit but enters for three counters on it which would hit for three in my late game strategy plus it's less than two so elspeth can pick it up so and it's a permanent so i can play it with sarah paragon as well uh Ryu's is good right here but there's no guarantee that this isn't going to be board wiped next turn uh, I don't see... Alright, so add one man of any color, but you have to spend one. So they could do a board wipe next turn if they play a land. Uh, but I'm just going to assume that they don't. Hope for the best here. If they don't play anything, that's a that's a dub for me. Because I'm going to play Elspeth. Put Ryu up in the air for four. Swing four, swing four again. And the second time swinging, I'll add, what is that? One, two, three for the training. Four, five, six, seven. That's a good swing. But my opponent has another planes now. So there could be a depop. No. What is this? Each person gets a tapped power stone. For seven, look at the top four cards of your library. You may reveal an artifact from among them. Put it in your hand. The rest on the bottom of your library in any order. Okay, so some sort of digging to four reach. All right. I'm going to just keep pressing then and see what's going on. Yeah, I think best move here. Add a, add a counter to Ryu now. Because that is reach flying over isn't really going to help me 
I do have first strike already, so I'm guessing lifelink might be better. I mean, I could do vigilance, he untaps himself, but that's only when it swings alone. I'm going to go for lifelink in case there's something random about this deck that I'm not thinking of. Four for first strike should not be a block. I don't imagine my opponent's gonna block after that. Combat tricks. Any kind of bouncing. Nothing. And there was no counter on the L spell, which is strange. Uh, when you play any kind of blue, you always assume that there's some sort of counter. Any attack, any kind of stuff going on here. Not a very interesting game. <laughs> Tap draw a card, that's game. That was a quick one, not a lot going on. Haven't seen that deck before, but it's probably just something somebody threw together to try to test out an idea or something. So we got lucky with that one. Let's run it back, that didn't take too long. Only in tier 3, nothing special right now. Um, in all honesty, Platinum is not a good spot to be in. Alright, jumping into another one. Uh, just doing the uh, one of ranked matches right now. I, I might start leaning into the best of 3, but in, in all honesty, every time I do the best of 3, if you just outright crush somebody in that first match... They'll take forever when they sideboard. Uh, they'll also, like, purposely waste your time. They will just take forever in between turns through that second one, just hoping that you'll leave and join another game. And I don't think that that's cool. I think that that's just a waste of everyone's time. Like, if you're going to lose, okay, lose. Uh, if you have any kind of chance of winning, stay in the game. But that's just, that's just me. This is a keep. I got two two drops, three and a four. The four drop is the most important one here. That's the one that lets me play all of the stuff underneath. So if they get removed, if that's a blue black deck that they get countered, uh, and or removed if they're on the battlefield, anything like that, I've got some resilience factor to bring them back. The only thing I don't want to see is discard. Like if they look at my hand and discard Sarah, then I'm in a tight spot. Ooh, two drop. Uh, I'm going to throw Virtuoso simply because uh, Mono Red likes to swing every single turn. So I'm assuming I'm going to be able to swing back. Haste, I think. No, no haste. Uh, can it block? Can't block. All right, so we lucked out with that one. Play Face Breaker for turn three. It's either Face Breaker or Angel Fire. And that's going to help me grow into my late game really fast. All right, so... It's turn three. I'm the first of turn three. My opponent hasn't had their turn three yet. I'm going to now have five mana, six mana going into turn four. Or I'll be able to use that much mana. Uh, I could use Gobacon because I have a four drop. The highest in the deck is five drop. Uh, and I'm readily getting to that point. Um, or I could keep the tokens because Facebreaker lets me sack them. So I can really dig for that Angel Fire. It's kind of a toss-up. Um, I do like the Gobicon just to play it safe, but I can wait till next turn to do that. So I'm gonna end the turn and just kind of see. <laughs> Land for turn. All right, so this one flips becomes prowess, prowess. So they might want to hold what they're what they have as far as burn one more turn to try to try to get me. Okay. Alright, so now I can play land and go adversary twice or pump it once. And that'll make Virtuoso a 2-2 uh, two, two double strike. So I highly doubt that there will be a block, though it could do prowess. That's something I gotta be aware of. Hmm. Interesting. Let's just dig. Let's just dig. See if we can get that angel fire. We get it one. Two chances here. Nope. And I already played a land. That was a mess up on my part. I should have done that first. Because now that land is just gone. But I'm already at where I need as far as mana goes. Ooh. That actually worked out in our favor. We're going to play Ryu for four. 
Face Breaker needs to be blocked by two because of the Menace. So I'll swing with Face Breaker, but it's also a Warrior. So it will untap. I'd imagine I'd see some sort of burn here. Two damage, prowess. Okay, great. You can't block anyway. It's, it's got menace. So I think that was a misplay on my opponent. Swing again. Cool. Got our tokens back. Um, I could play adversary, just get some lifelink on the board, but... Turn four. I think there is a board wipe that does for three on everything, but the only and the only thing that would stay from that is spell seer. Um, so if they had that and a fourth mana that could bring back the phoenix and spell seer, that would be a really tough move. I'm gonna see what they have. I just gotta know now. Love that card. Just for red white being able to see that. Ooh, stoke the flames. That is a dangerous card. Four four damage for four. Any target, but you can convoke. So it's really a four for two if you play it right. Uh, and Ren's Resolve. Exile top two cards of your library until the end of your next turn. You may play those. That'll help you get a land. That's a pretty good card. I'm gonna get rid of Stoke the Flames. Now it's gonna be really hard for them to play Stoke the Flames. Uh, you'd have to tap four into. They've already done Ren's Resolve, so that's not happening this turn. Cool. Very nice. Uh, I'll get hit for four. Ooh, misplay. Misplay by my opponent. I've got first strike on the battlefield. That's done. That's done. Uh, I'll get hit for four. Why? Okay, so, this is going to be a solid amount of damage. Excellent. I think I can do 14. Swing for 4. Yeah, that'll do it. Um, 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, good game. That red deck, very quick. Uh, really try to avoid playing those if I can. They're they're all the way into diamond. You're not gonna not see that. That's definitely gonna be a thing. Um, some of the deck, some of the cards like allow stuff not to burn you. There's like a three drop in Boros color that does that, but it's not worth it. Three drop flyer that that's all it does. <clears throat> it could easily be burned, so wouldn't use that. Um, Nice, got my daily stuff. We got a pack, let's check it out. But yeah, I mean, it's it's strong. It beats a lot of stuff, but if you have a little bit of life gain, you'll be all right. Bounteous Dawn, that's a cool lifelink too, two for four. Invasion of Theros is, I honestly think that's a really good one if you have like an enchantment kind of deck. Uh, obviously, you don't need to have blue in the deck. It's just blue white there, but there's a lot of enchantments um, with blue. Yeah, this is cool because it lets you fetch. And then if you have enough enchantment aura on the battlefield, uh, this will have lifelink and indestructible. For a 4-4, that's not bad. Uh, three drop battle that you only need to hit 4-4. Four, four. I mean, 4 is starting to get up there. 3 is like, you want to see 3 if less possible, but I don't think there's a battle with less than 3. And... Uh, whenever an enchantment enters the battlefield under your control, draw a card. That's a really cool mechanic. I hope I hope to see people make a deck around that. I'm a free-to-play player, though, so I'm kind of limited with what I can use. That's why you'll typically see my decks always turn to Boros. I, I'm generally just playing off the stuff that I had the last time and, and building off of those, but I've had some really cool decks. I might make a video where I go into how all of those came to be, what they are, and, and talk about those. Um... But let's let's keep playing. All right. Let's see. What does my opponent play? 
play. Uh, this is close to a keep. In fact, I'll keep. <laughs> Can't play the turn one. Uh, I'll jump to Virtuoso turn two, and if I need to, hopeful on turn three, but ideally I'll get a land. Ideally. Didn't get it. Ooh. But we got Angel Fire. That's promising. Just need that one more land. And we're playing a mono white deck, so uh, lay down arms is likely what we'll see. Oh, but it's not. It's not a planes. Oh, that hurts. Um, so I could do hopeful, but that's not ideal. We'll do we'll, we'll do face breaker and see if my opponent does anything. No, it didn't even pause. So I'm guessing my opponent can't do anything right now. There shouldn't be a lay down arms in their hand. And we are moving along just like that. We're into late game material. Uh, that's why I like this deck the way I've built it here. I think it's very strong. Um, they're just now getting out wedding announcement and I'm going to be playing Elspeth. That's a good turn four for me, I'd say. <clears throat> All right, we missed our land drop, but that's fine. <clears throat> so I could play Angel Fire and just crush in there. In fact, I might. Um, actually, let's do that because I can play Elspeth on the back end. So I'm going to do three here. Put it on Virtuoso. Might be able to get our land here. Does let me draw. There's our land. I'm going to pitch Hopeful because, well, they may be an enchantment heavy deck. We'll keep Hopeful. We'll get rid of Gobakan. Excellent land for turn. <clears throat> um... Now they could have a board wipe, turn four board wipe, once they see that this is pretty strong. I will swing with both. We'll get two more tokens out of that, eight life. And that'll put my opponent in a very, very tight spot. Loving it. Okay, so we have lethal next turn if my opponent doesn't fix the board state somehow board wipe there's the board wipe uh nothing i could do now i can there's something i could do it's a little dangerous um what i can do is i can sack tokens to try to find lauren's escape and if i do find it fantastic because then that'll be lethal so we'll just give it a shot i mean like who knows maybe Ooh, we got another face breaker he's going down the drain uh, if I do one more, at least I still have an Elspeth next turn. We're going to do that. Just looking for that Lauren's escape. Didn't get it. That's okay. Uh, now I will let that resolve. Gobacon and Facebreaker are gone because I'd have to play that this turn. And it is my opponent's turn, so I may not. <sighs> Interesting. I could play Hopeful, uh, do Angel Fire, and then next turn get rid of the wedding announcement. That's a play. Uh, I think a better play is to get Elspeth out there, throw a creature with a shield token down, auto pay, and go from there. Every drop is an opportunity to learn more oh, we didn't get one! Safety. You gotta be kidding me, there was no three drop? Three or less? That's okay. Got our land. We'll play hopeful for now. That's a good block. Try to keep Elspeth alive. Oh man, that stinks. Now we're in a tight spot. Opponent's got a lot of cards in hand. We went from a, a very awesome situation to a, a dangerous one. Hmm. Ossification's gonna get rid of the Elspeth. What? Misplay? Uh, it says creature or planeswalker and opponent controls until it leaves the battlefield. Get rid of Elspeth. These jobs are getting deadlier. Don't know why my opponent did that. All right, we will do adversary. Uh, decline. I will go ahead and make it flying. Show what you got. It's gonna get vigilance from this. Swinging in for six. That'll be lethal next turn unless my opponent finds a way to get around that, which is likely to happen. Both two twos are gonna go to where it's Elspeth, I would assume. No, that's it, that's game. Yes, all right, that's a tough one, but we got it. A little bit of a 
a little bit wonky in the beginning with the not hitting our land drops, but because of Face Breaker and then first strike damage, creating a treasure token, and then regular combat damage, doing that, that's what double strike is. It is first strike damage and regular combat damage all together. So uh, you want to keep that in mind, which means if I have uh, Illuminator, Face Breaker, and then turn four uh, Ryu, when Illuminator gets in there, it's going to do first strike, regular, next round of uh, next additional combat phase, first strike and regular. So that's potential four tokens each turn. It's a lot of digging, a lot of mana to play what you have in your hand. So I'm a big fan of that strategy. We're not going too long on this video, so let's run it back. Been having a lot of fun with the strategy and it's not that hard to get to i mean the uncommons uh, illuminator is just an amazing uncommon uh there are a lot of rares and i think my mythic rares are elspeth and all will be one and i th if ryu is a mythic rare then that as well but i don't think he is and then a common lauren's escape that i mean that's that's pretty good. All right, so this this does not look like a keep. I've got massive late game stuff, but no creature presence. So if I draw into any more stuff that's like Lauren's Escape, Angel Fire, which is a four of, which is a four of, I'll be in a bad spot. So that's a mall. This is a very bad draw. Mall. Keep. I will get rid of the high end and the low end and work with that. You never want to do it. You never want to mold to five. Sometimes you have to. Two drop. Well, we're going to see it cut down. Some sort of removal. Uh, make me sack a creature. Minus one, minus one. That's what's up. Alright. They never stick around long in the early game. Alright. Guessing there'll be another removal. Hopefully we draw a land and we can start playing those again from our graveyard. Gain two life would be the move. Yep. And what do we got? Three drop. Any board states. Not seeing it. Underdog. Okay, playing the underdog. Um... I will swing in. And I don't want to play Sarah, but he didn't remove Phase Breaker, and I'm assuming you would want to do that. So there is Sarah. Hopefully we'll get back Adversary soon. We got a 2-3 and a 3-2. 4 drop. Could be Obliterator. No. Go for the throat, taking out Sarah. That's tough. Swinging in for three. It's tapped. We could do the same thing. Excellent. Okay, now we have a little bit of wiggle room. Um, I'll swing in through first. If I need to, I'll keep him alive. There was no wait for a response there. The computer just told us my opponent doesn't have anything for two right now. They could draw something, but right now they don't. Um, let's see. I will play Sarah to get ready to rebuild the board state next turn. Got one open mana to keep her alive. A little tight right now. We'll see, we'll see. Sh Shouldred. I don't know how to say that. Uh, this is the weaker one. The, the better one is the five drop that makes you sack a creature when it enters. Uh, really building up the board state. Okay. Uh, every time I draw a card, I'm going to lose a life. Every time they draw, they will gain a life. I don't imagine my opponent swings here. Yeah. Draw, lose two life. Okay, so I need lifelink. Opponent's tapped out. So if I swing over, I will get a treasure token and I can keep doing the Lauren's escape. So I will play... Well, let's just take a look. Let's see what we got with this treasure token. Crack it open. 
crack it open like we crack open packs over here. Um, so Sarah, I could play, and then I'm doing six over the top. Um, and if I leave it to block, I'm losing six a turn. No. Ah, uh, but then I don't have it. Then I don't have it. We'll try to hold one more turn. It's a little greedy, but we'll try. Great, we got our land. Sorry, treasure token. So now we can keep one of them alive. End turn. That evolved sleeper could cause problems with that five open mana. They can they can evolve it once, two times, now three times. They can make it a four four. That's dangerous. <laughs> and they can do that at instant speed. So something you gotta watch out for. If I had any blast zones, I could get rid of it real quick. Just play it and gone. But oh no! Target opponent sacrifices a creature. If they can't, they lose two life. Uh, they draw a card. So my opponent's gonna gain a lot of life. Draw a lot of cards. Is what is what's happening. I'll get rid of the tap, Sarah. They gain four life. Evolve Sleeper can only be a 2-2. Two, two. Great. So Face Breaker will take him. I don't see my opponent swinging other than the 4-5. And I hope he does, because I will team block. Now... Okay. I am in some dangerous territory right now. Mm. Opponent's going for some serious board state. There's no ta there's no open mana right now, so I can swing over with the four five. I'm gonna play hopeful just to get some more board state. Swing over for four, get that token, and pass the turn. That's all we can do right now. It's a tough one. Seven open mana, that's dangerous. A lot of stuff you can play. I have four lands. <laughs> Come on, what do you got? What are you doing? Are any of these enchantments? There's one. So I can remove two plus one plus ones. Destroy each creature with power two or less. So they'll get rid of one of theirs. Get rid of one of mine. Each opponent sacrifices a creature with the highest power. So I can sack Sarah. I'm going to lose Hopeful and Sarah. Uh, I could use Lauren's Escape on Hopeful to keep him around, but it's better to use it on the lifelink to draw out the game. Wow, my opponent could have buffed theirs to to keep it around, but that's not the case. They chose not to. Underdog playing it as is. No blitz. Swing that 4-5. Do it. Swing the 4-5. Ah. We got Virtuoso. Um... This is interesting. I uh, will first sack that token. See what we can do. Nice. Is a board wipe. Um, I got enough in hand. My opponent's got one card in hand. Uh, as it stands, I do like what I have. But it's probably better that I use the D-pop, get rid of them, and just go from there. My opponent will, however, be able to use Tenacious Underdog multiple times uh, each time. So that's where it gets sticky. Can I get through this without using Depop? Well, 
Here's one way to figure it out. Just swing in there. I don't know. I'm gonna leave it up to my opponent. Are they gonna block anything? Do they think I have any combat tricks? There is red mana open, so do they think? Ah, they did both. Okay, so. Yes, those are the blocks. Now I will think about it. Um, I can use Lauren's Escape to keep one of them alive. And then I could play Facebreaker. The amount of damage that I would take. Next turn I'll be up to 11. It will do 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Can't do it. Oh, I gained two more. My mistake. I'm at 13. Still a dangerous spot to be in. My opponent draws one land. I'll be looking at six a turn. No. Oh, ouch. That hurts. Draw. They passed immediately. I think what I'll do, it's normally a two drop, Tenacious Underdog, so I could play Illuminator Virtuoso, block the 4-5, put Lauren's Escape on it, uh, it'll be a 2-2, two -two, but it'll be indestructible, it'll allow me to scry and dig for that Angel Fire that I need to get life out of that. I could do Face Breaker, but that's tough. And it wouldn't let it wouldn't let me get rid of the apocalypse. Wouldn't let me do a lot. So end turn. Well, this is a, this is the tough one. We'll see what happens. Eight mana. I expect to see both of the underdogs coming out hot with the apocalypse. Second one. You can do it every turn. Draw a card. No, chose not to. Wonder why. Pass. You're going to swing with at least a 3-2. Smart play by my opponent. They're not risking much. Pass. Declare blocks. Then play Lauren's Escape. Discard a card to give it plus one, plus one. I don't want to discard Face Breaker. In case I draw another land. And I would have. So, down it go. And that thing will just stay in the graveyard and they'll keep doing that. So I'm in a tight spot. Unless, and I don't have any graveyard removal right now. I took that out. Ah, nothing. Ah. <sighs> Now I could put two plus uh, two counters on blast zone, but I don't think that's gonna do it. I think we're stuck here. Um, could play face breaker um, to try to get tokens with virtuoso, but that's six. That's ten damage. I don't think we got this game. I think we're out. But I will play it out. Just gonna load up that board state. No attacks. We'll see if we can stretch it one more turn. Opponent only needs to do five damage. <laughs> Removal. Two plus one plus one counters gains life link. Strange power to our less. That's it. Good game. Oh, rah. They'll hit for six, they'll pass the turn, and that'll be it. Ooh, tough. And they could have hit for more if they wanted to. That was a rough one. That's the two. Tough game. I'm going to say that's because I'm molded five, but, you know, I'll leave that up to you, how you all feel about that. Uh, we got time for one more. We'll do one more. That's probably the best part about this game. You can play your deck over and over and over, and you still, uh, 
you still play new stuff. So. Ah, uh, interesting. I like the threes and the fours there. And the one board wipe. I don't like seeing two mana. And no early game. I want to keep it. That's not a smart move, though. I go first. There's a little leverage there. Oh, that's tough. I have a lot of ones and twos. Maybe I could draw that. But I could also draw five drops, and that's not what you want. I'm gonna mull. That was a bad idea. Probably should have kept it. Down to five again. Oh, I hate that. All right, let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that. Turn one. Here we go. <clears throat> let's see. Oh, we got our lands though. Means it's playable. We're playing a Rakdos deck. Burn and remove. That's what. I, that's what we're gonna expect to see. Got the champion sleeves, I see. See how it paused right there? My opponent had to say, yes, let that hit the battlefield. So they'll remove it. Some of the fi uh, f like finer things in MTGA on, <laughs> um, as opposed to tabletop magic where you wouldn't know. I mean, you're always going to ask, does that resolve, that kind of stuff, but like, you wouldn't know instinctively like the computer just told me you didn't have anything. You can get around that. Um, there's the uh, control, if you see at the bottom here. So now I'm holding it. But, you, I mean, you typically don't see people doing that until Diamond. So, like, I could bluff. So I'm, I'm holding control right now so that my opponent's like, or I clicked it so they're like, wait, what do you mean? Why is it waiting? You do that a couple times a game when you really want to get in their head and mess with them. One, okay, I'll block with the one one first strike. All right, uh, nothing I can really do here. That three, four, it gives other creatures you control minus one, minus one. That seems pretty weak. Oh, now I see why. Uh, three tap, return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Uh, gains if this creature would leave the battlefield, exile it instead, and you can only do it as a sorcery. That sucks. They're going to play Atroxa next turn. <laughs> oh, man. That sucks so much. Is that a, it's normally a seven drop, and they're going to get it with a Rakdos deck. Not even close to the mana that it needs. Oh, that is very cheeky. All right, land, land, land. Come on, land. <laughs> we need a land. Oh, that's that's tough. If we don't get a land, that's gonna be a problem. Ooh, they did it a different way. They did it with Diagraph Rebirth. It's got flashback for seven. They're two away from that. One less for each creature that died this turn. That's pretty cool. Yep, I can see the strategy here. Oh, and they just picked up Olivia. Oh, oh, that's tough. Uh, get out of here, hopeful. You don't want to see this. Uh, for one, nothing. Fast turn. Oh, they got a pitch. They got too many cards. They didn't play their land for turn. Land. Oh, we drew Elspeth. Tough break for us. Next. No attacks. Alright, so one hope I have right now is that my opponent will flood the board with a whole bunch of stuff that I can remove all at once would be great if I just draw a land. <laughs> How many times have we said that, right? I just need a land. Just one land. Just one more will be fine. 
Uh, get out of here. Watch, we'll draw uh, Angel Fire just because that would have been a good back, back and forth for a little. Oh, hit me for two. Didn't get it. Didn't get it. Um, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Puts me at 12 damage coming in, assuming they don't play Olivia, which does have Flying Haste. That's game. Who would have saw that coming, though? Especially with all the land we have. All right, I'll stop blaming it on that. But you get the point. I got enough lands in there too. I got a twenty no twenty two lands, so it's it's pretty good considering I curve out at four. I will block the three four. Yep, that's enough on the pass that it'll kill me. Good game. All right. That'll do it for that video. Uh, as always, watch these games, get those gains, and walk those planes until next time, deckheads. Keep it easy.